Hello everybody. So this lesson is about nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Now these two are also nuclear reactions. So radioactivity that you've just learned is a naturally occurring spontaneous nuclear reaction um, where things are constantly being given off from an unstable nucleus in order to become more stable. There are a few more nuclear reactions that we need to be aware of and one of them is nuclear fission. Now the word fission means to break apart. So nuclear fission is induced in larger unstable nuclei. For example, the, the nucleus of uranium, say 235, is unstable and in order and it's unstable. So the nucleons themselves have quite a lot of energy. And it is rendered even more unstable if it captures one slow moving neutron. So what happens is it captures a slow moving neutron and that renders it even more unstable. And what happens is this large uranium nucleus splits into two medium sized nuclei. And in addition to this, splitting up into two medium sized nuclei, it releases or gives out a few neutrons. And these neutrons in turn are absorbed by other uranium nuclei and they split up in turn. And this, this sort of reaction can, can quickly go out of control and become a chain reaction. Now there are many, many ways a uranium nucleus can split into two medium sized nucleons. And I'm just showing you one way that it can split up. So for example, so a slow moving neutron is captured by uranium 235. Now, notice I've used the word slow moving. Now, slow moving neutrons are also called thermoneutrons. And the reason why it has to be slow moving is if it was moving fast, it would go right through the nucleus and you wouldn't get nuclear fission. So it has to be slow moving so that it can be absorbed by the nucleus of the uranium atom. So what happens is this uranium splits into two medium sized nuclei, for example, barium and krypton. And then in addition to this, it gives out, it could be two, it could be three, it gives out a few more, excuse me, red. It gives out, let's say, three neutrons. Now each of these neutrons could be theoretically absorbed by uranium, other uranium nucleus because in a sample there are millions and millions of atoms so and each of those split into two and each of them give out more neutrons and and these are further absorbed by more uranium atoms and can you see it suddenly becomes an exponential growth and this sort of thing is called a chain reaction now, chain reaction is probably what leads to a bomb to destruction, but it can be controlled and used for useful purposes like in nuclear power plants where you can actually control this, you can stop it, and that's what nuclear fission is about. Now, the thing is, in all these nuclear reactions, fission and fusion, uh, which is another sort of reaction, the, the products formed actually have the nucleons are more stable, they are still, these may be radioactive, so they will have a long half-life, but they are more stable compared to the uranium atoms. So when the products are more stable, it means the products, the nucleons of the products have got greater binding energy. So the nucleons themselves of barium and krypton are at lower energy levels. So you've got to put energy into them to free them. Now, because they also are low energy levels, the mass per nucleon of barium and krypton are going to be lower than that of the uranium nucleus. And this difference in mass is what's given out as energy. Okay, so the other reaction that you need to know about is nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion, I'll just write that here. Is what happens in the sun and the word to fuse means to come together. Now new, unlike nuclear fission which takes place in large nuclei, nuclear fusion is two relatively light nuclei 
come together and fuse to form a heavier, more stable nucleus. Now, we, it's, what takes place in the sun is usually isotopes of hydrogen, um, like deuterium, for example. So deuterium. Now, what happens is the temperature and pressure in the sun is enormous. Now, under this really very high temperature and pressure, what happens is that the atom is, slipped, is stripped off its electrons and it becomes what's called plasma. And because you can't get two positive charges to actually go and fuse together, they repel each other, the electrostatic force of repulsion. But under this enormous temperature and pressure, the kinetic energy of these these nuclei is very large and that's what causes them to fuse together with the release of a huge amount of energy much much bigger than that of the energy given out by nuclear fission so this this ends up with you could get helium or alpha particles depending on what isotopes there are you may get more products and it all depends how you map you um, balance your equation now, just relating all this fission and fusion, I know you've done this in year 12, but if you want to relate this to the nuclear binding energy and nuclear stability, it's just another way of looking at it a little more. So if I draw my binding energy curve here, so that's a binding energy per nucleon. And this is your nucleon number or mass number. You start with zero here. And the binding energy curve looks something like this. So ordinary hydrogen has no binding energy because it's only got one proton in the nucleus. But isotopes of hydrogen will have binding energy. Not a lot though, it's quite small. So you've got... the binding energy curve you've got iron so let's say this is your isotope of hydrogen deuterium deuterium tritium they're all over here this one is helium okay let's say your uranium is somewhere here and your barium and krypton are somewhere over there theoretically so when isotopes of hydrogen fuse to become helium which has got a greater binding energy per nucleon the amount of energy that is released is this much okay there's a huge jump because it needs a huge amount of energy that's released okay and that's the amount of energy released per nucleon when uranium undergoes nuclear fission to produce barium, or barium and krypton, the amount of energy released is much less. It's really massive compared to a chemical reaction, but when you compare fission over here and fusion, fusion produces much more energy. The other thing about fusion reaction is that the products of fusion are quite clean. It's just helium, okay? Whereas the product of fission are radioactive and they actually cause damage to the environment and what is really a problem is disposal of radioactive waste so now what we are trying to do and what scientists are trying to explore and maybe you'll do that someday when you grow up and you know you learn a lot is try because we need energy in this world to you know to keep things going for all sorts of things so rather than um, depending on nuclear fission for energy they're trying to get energy from nuclear fusion now the the products the raw materials are available because deuterium is there in seawater but the thing is in order for nuclear fusion to take place it needs very very high temperatures and when i say high temperatures like high like high temperatures like the sun where you probably don't have anything on earth that can withstand these high temperatures so scientists are coming up with all sorts of things creating magnetic fields to hold them off the walls and doing all these clever things okay so i hope that helped and that's it for nuclear fission and fusion and that kind of concludes our nuclear physics part for this internal so bye for now and i hope that helped